welcome to Alpha Steam. This is a tutorial on the basics of wheat weaving. Um, now, wheat weaving is actually much easier than it looks. Um, and it's also a very addicting hobby once you get the hang of it. Uh, once you learn a few of the basic plates, uh, the possibilities are pretty much endless from there. But if you've never woven with wheat, it can seem a bit daunting at first. So uh, you'll have to learn the basics so that you can eventually turn some of these into some of these. Now, wheat weavings, or corn dollies as they're sometimes called, date back thousands of years to when farmers would be worried about the harvest, so they would take the last few strands of a good harvest and weave them into a design in hopes of catching the spirit of the wheat. Come spring, the farmer would take that wheat weaving and plant it and have it be the first grain planted in hopes of ensuring a bountiful harvest. Now there are a lot of different types of grain that you can weave with. Um, the two I have here are just common wheat and rye. Um, there's also, you can also weave with oats, it makes kind of interesting designs, and there's black bearded wheat where the, the little things that fly out here will be black but the inside will be white. Um, there's, there's many different kinds of grain that you can weave with and it's fun to experiment to see what different designs come out when you use different types of wheat. Now if you live in a rural area, it shouldn't be too difficult to find a farmer who would sell you a few stalks of grain. However, if you don't, then your best bet is usually to check in a florist shop as they often carry different types of wheat and rye for use in bouquets, but you can use it just as easily in wheat weavings. And as a third possibility, if you have a garden, you can always grow your own because most of these are very easy to grow. Um, for a beginner, wheat, the plain wheat is actually the easiest because the stems are the most pliable on wheat. I actually like using rye better because the stems are longer, but it's a little more difficult because they're more tendency to snap. Now this is the difference in size between a wheat straw and a rye straw. As you can see, the rye straw is much longer, several inches, than the wheat straw, which is good because it means you don't have to change straws as much, but it's also a lot harder to weave with the rye, so it's best to start with the wheat. Now when you're doing a your project, you want to use straws that are fairly close in size. Notice that some of them are a little thicker and some of them are a little thinner, so you just want to group those so that when you're doing your project, you can use some that are all the same size. So the first thing you'll need to do is remove the leaves on your wheat because that stops the wheat from soaking up water and you want it to soak up water. So what you want to do is you want to look for this little notch that's right in the stem and you'll cut just above that and then the leaf slides right off. You can do that to all of your wheat pieces. Now for any wheat weaving project you do, you'll need to soak your straws. So what you just want to do is put them right in there immerse them in water, and usually they'll hold themselves down under the water enough, but if not, you can just put a little weight right on the heads. Usually on the heads is the best place, because otherwise you'll bend the stems. And then you'll just leave them there for 20 to 30 minutes in hot water, so the straws will be nice and pliable. Now once your straws have been soaking for a while, you want to test them and make sure that they're ready. The easiest way to do that is to just take the end of it and give it a little bend. Now if it bends nicely, then you know the straws are ready. If, on the other hand, it snaps, like that, then you know that they're not ready and they need to soak a little bit longer. So once your straws are ready, you'll have to tie the heads together for most designs. And the best way to do that is to take a piece of thread and fold it in half so you get the double layers. And then what you'll do is you'll just wrap it right around the heads. You wrap it around twice. And then just kind of even out the heads by pulling the stem so that all the heads are even right up at the top. And then you'll just take this Twist it around, just a regular knot, and you'll just pull that as tight as you can. And what that'll do is it'll put a little dent in the wheat. That's good because it means that the thread won't slide off then. And so then of course you'll just tie it one more time to ensure that it's a nice tight knot. And then you can just trim any thread ends. Now this part will always be the back where the thread is. You'll always want to make sure that is in the back of your design because it doesn't look very nice if it's on the front. So once you've done the preparation steps, you'll want to figure out a way to hold the weaving while you're weaving it. The way I usually do that is I will put my, I'll sit on the ground and I'll put my foot right on the straws and hold them on the ground and then weave these together. But a lot of people find that uncomfortable to sit that way. So another option is that you can cut a notch in a board or a piece of cardboard and then stick the heads right in there and then just weave with the stems. So what you would do is just take a piece of thick cardboard and cut a V-shaped notch in it. Then you take your wheat weaving and slide the heads right in through the notch like that. That would hold it 
and allow you to weave the stems while the heads remain safely intact over there. And then you can just secure it to the back of a chair so that will hold right onto the heads and allow you to weave. And you can even sit right in the chair facing backwards so you have a seat too. It's not exactly pretty but it gets the job done and allows you to easily weave while the cardboard holds the heads. Or you can use something heavy like a brick. Just set it right on top of the heads and then that will hold onto the heads so you can weave the straws together. Now when you're weaving, you'll find that the strands are of different lengths, so you'll end up with pieces that are shorter than you need them to be. That's when you add another straw. So what you'll do is you'll just take the smaller end of another straw, and you'll slide that right inside of the short piece, and then you'll just keep right on weaving. And then you'll see that there's a little piece on the very end of the old straw that hangs off a little bit, and you'll just give that a little cut like that, trimming up the edges, and then it'll make a nice smooth plate. So those are the basic things you'll need to know for any wheat weaving, and now I hope that you'll move on to the next video. We'll be having a bit more fun by weaving an actual design. We'll be using a very basic braiding style, and we'll be doing a design known as a love knot.